Holmes Ollis and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Tuesday the 10th of June 2025. There's a lot to get through in this forecast update as well. That strong low pressure system now moving deeper out into the Tasman Sea but it's expected to bring some rainfall to the east coast of New South Wales. We're expecting showers and thunderstorms across southwestern Australia and we'll give an update on the rainfall forecast that was there for central Queensland. Let's jump straight into things today. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Take a look at the Tasman Sea right now. We do have that strong low pressure system now swirling around south of Lord Howe Island. This is a significant low pressure system and it's moving on towards New Zealand at this point in time. It really does look like an absolute brute of a storm on the satellite imagery. And if we zoom in on this, you can see it's encompassing pretty much the entirety of the southern Tasman Sea. Some strong wind observations also whipping around on the northern side of the system as well. Lord Howe Island blowing at 35 kilometres an hour gusting up towards 60 kilometers an hour and we've got ship observations here blowing at about 60 kilometers an hour as well offshore from New South Wales so those wind observations certainly are now starting to get up there. The good news is as this low pressure system pulls away from the New South Wales coastline the heavy rainfall that was occurring there yesterday afternoon that quite a few people off guard uh, is going to start to pull away from the coastline we're expecting a reduction in the almost severe weather conditions that we've been seeing lately over the New South Wales coastline and we'll see if we can get the latest radar and satellite imagery to load in here but you can can see very minimal radar, uh, very minimal rainfall and very minimal cloud activity now occurring across the New South Wales coastline and the severe weather is now really pulling away from the state at this point in time. Still some strong wind observations blowing at around 50 to 60 kilometres an hour into the southeast of the state. Uh, around Mallacoota and Victoria, Gabo Island Lighthouse blowing at 55 kilometres an hour out of the southwest. So the winds are still quite fresh, that's for sure. And one thing that is remaining quite fresh is those temperatures. They are very, very sharp across parts of New South Wales and Victoria. Another cold night, that's for sure. Into the higher elevations, we had well below zero temperatures and we've had multiple uh, locations across interior parts of New South Wales and Victoria going towards freezing. The temperatures now beginning to rise there but still a very cold night that's for sure temperatures up into the southeast of queensland roma dipped to minus three degrees and minus one at miles it definitely has been a cold one that's for sure a very cold start across parts of queensland those temperatures should warm up today but nonetheless it's a slow pressure system in its wake of that southwesterly airflow that's coming up from uh, basically antarctica that really has left a pretty sharp cold across much of southwest uh, southeastern australia Let's look at the forecast modelling for this system here. Like I said, this is pulling away from the uh, Victoria and the New South Wales coastlines right now. There will still be some heavy showers lingering here and there. Whether they get themselves over the coastline or not at this point in time is a bit of un an unknown. A few showers still continuing for coastal locations through Victoria throughout the remainder of today, but they will be few and far between. They'll keep those temperatures down, though, that's for sure. Winds also shouldn't be too crazy across the Victoria and all the New South Wales coastline. Now, as this low-pressure system pulls itself over towards New Zealand, we're expecting this to sling up some more showers and rainfall activity from the southwest which is going to give way to some cool windy and showery weather from about Thursday afternoon onwards across the east coast of New South Wales extending through the metro region up into the Hunter and then into the mid north coast through Friday afternoon we're expecting some heavy rainfall to develop in those regions there and we might see a low pressure system slowly develop Friday afternoon into Saturday morning offshore from the northeast coast of New South Wales uh, if it does develop it will be a very short lived system if it doesn't develop it's not really going to have much of a bearing on the uh, on how much rainfall does fall. We're still expecting that brief period from about Thursday lunchtime into Friday evening of some heavy periods of rainfall across the northeast of New South Wales, the coastline there, especially through the mid north coast and parts of the Hunter region. Rainfall accumulations aren't anything too serious at this point in time. You can see three day rainfall accumulations encompassing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday aren't anything crazy on the forecast modeling, but depending on what showers get through and if we do get nice lines of rainfall into these areas, we could be looking at up to 125 millimeters of rainfall spread out over that three day period. Now rainfall is going to be coastal based which means accumulations further inland and I mean just further inland from the coastline. Uh, if Newcastle picks up 25 millimetres of rainfall you go three kilometres inland you'd be looking at five millimetres of rainfall so I mean that this rainfall is exclusive to coastal communities. Um, uh, if we do see that significant rainfall accumulations along the coastline, we're not expecting flooding from this at all. Uh, even though the Bin North Coast is absolutely saturated and they're just coming out of a near record-breaking flood event from some regions less than a month ago, the rainfall accumulations here aren't going to penetrate far enough inland to spark significant rises in those water levels. 
The one thing that I am a little bit worried about, and that is the comfort of people uh, in the mid-north coast and across New South Wales, because these winds are going to be coming out of the southwest and they will be very fresh, we're expecting temperatures to be frigid through Friday especially. Uh, they shouldn't scrape into the low teens, to be honest, through Friday. Uh, we're expecting maximum temperatures between 12 to 14 degrees along the coastline and then further inland, and especially if you throw some elevation into the mix, we'll be looking at temperatures below 10 degrees. So very cool maximums, very cool temperatures and very cool winds expected to be coming out of the southwest. And encompassed with that rainfall and the odd thunderstorm here and there it is going to be chilly and I cannot stress that enough I mean if we just take a look at the temperature forecast on its own through Friday this is at uh, what would that be that'd be at about uh, 2 p.m. on uh, Friday so when we're expecting to, relatively speaking it to be the warmest part of Friday uh, we're going to be looking at temperatures on the mid-north coast between 11 to about 13 degrees and again once you get further inland those temperatures drop deep into the single digits so it is going to be a freezing freezing cold day on both Thursday, Friday, and then into Saturday. And like I said, whilst rainfall accumulations aren't anything serious, they're nothing to write home about. This weather is going to be unpleasant and it is just going to be more rainfall for the mid-north coast. The heaviest falls should be between Newcastle up to Tyree with a maximum of about 125 millimetres possible in those regions. There, rainfall accumulations between Sydney up to about Coffs Harbour will be north of 25 millimetres. Again, with the odd chance of some one or two locations getting up to about 75 or even 100 millimetres of rainfall. But again, Nothing too crazy, nothing too serious, nothing to be writing home about at this point in time. Certainly be interesting, that's for sure, and we'll wait and see what actually happens with this weather system here, but I thought it was something worth mentioning, especially because it's probably not something other major forecast outlets are going to pick up on at this point in time. Now, if you watched yesterday's forecast update, you'll know that we're talking about central Queensland for a potential rainfall event after uh, or into next weekend and into early next week, sometime between the Monday the 16th of June out to about the 20th or the 21st of June. The details on this weather event are still quite uncertain at this point in time, but we're expecting an enhancement in coral sea moisture to develop through this weekend, which could creep down into the central Queensland coastline through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday the 16th out to the 18th of June, respectively there. Major forecast modelling has developed some pretty decent congruency for it over the last couple of days. What it's going to be is a cloud band coming in from the northwest, but those winds are going to be deceiving coming in from the southeast, bringing in that moisture and meeting it up along the convergence lines, which will develop into some pretty significant rainfall hotspots across the central and the north Queensland coastlines. Uh, when we're talking about rainfall coming through between the 15th out to about the 20th or the 21st of June on this forecast modelling here. Again, details still very uncertain. Given that this is an out-of-season rainfall event for central and north Queensland, it is always going to come with a very heavy pinch of salt the forecasts are so I would like to say take this forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt but considering we do now have some congruency between forecast modelings and also forecast runs we're more likely than ever to see this rainfall event begin to develop and when I say rainfall event I use that term quite loosely we're looking at a maximum of 125 millimetres here which for Queensland is really a drop in the bucket they can handle a lot more rainfall given it is out of season rainfall though we'll likely see some uh, significant surprises that's for sure across the central and the north Queensland coastlines as to where this rainfall is coming from. So that's what I'm going to do my best right now to break that down for you. So like I said, rainfall coming out of the northwest, but it's going to be the winds coming out of the southeast that kind of mixes that up and uh, it makes this weather event a little bit confusing here. So the rainfall coming out of the uh, northwest, which means that it's going to slide down from the tropics. Plenty of tropical moisture as a result expected to extend across north Queensland. So expect some humid conditions this weekend as well. Rainfall persisting in bands of light to moderate rainfall through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday is where we're expecting the rainfall to be at its heaviest over far north Queensland, especially inland over the Cape York Peninsula, and then again south of Townsville down to Mackay and through the Whit Sundays, expecting some light to moderate falls there. Rainfall easing on Thursday and Friday and contracting to the Casper Coast on Friday. We're expecting a couple more days of showery conditions up there before rainfall departs from Queensland pretty much completely as we get out towards late June at this point in time on the forecast modelling. So again, let's just take a look at those rainfall accumulations right now. This is seven day rainfall accumulations on the forecast running between the 15th out to the 20th. 2nd of June. The peak accumulations of course in, in the Casper and the Daintree rainforest but that also comes from a couple of showers here and there around this weather event or the moderate rainfall falling through so we could be looking at between 70 to 140 millimetres of some heavy falls spread around, around the Casper coast with maximum accumulations up to 200 millimetres. Falls up to 100 millimetres also possible through parts of the Cape York Peninsula. We're talking about very remote northern Queensland at this point in time so no major population centres kind of in this swathe of heavy rainfall here and again it's not going to be enough to cause flooding 
morning, it's just going to be a couple of good drops of rainfall to keep those water levels topped up as we enter into the dry season. Rainfall accumulations between 10 to 50 millimetres expected north of Agnes Water and Gladstone. Rockhampton looking at about 15 millimetres, Ogmore about 20 millimetres, Mackay probably closer to about 40 millimetres of rainfall, and around Proserpine, probably the wettest location uh, eventually on the wet Sundays. We're looking at probably about 50 to 55 millimetres of rainfall here, and then it falls between that 30 to 50 millimetre mark expected north of Proserpine through Bowen Towns, Little Charters Towers, and up towards Cardwell, where rainfall accumulations once again pick up into the Casbury Coast. Rainfall isn't expected to be heavy south of Charters Towers, so Hugh Endon only looking at a couple of millimetres of rainfall, and then more agricultural communities and then more pastoral communities into Queensland, such as uh, Cloncurry, Wint, and Mutterborough, Long Reach, and Jericho, not expecting any rainfall. Maybe a couple of drops here and there, but again, nothing in the way of significant rainfall down there. Even uh, so, Moran by Claremont, uh, Glendon, Emerald, Dingo, those locations either only expecting a couple of millimetres of rainfall, and then once you get south of a line between Emerald out to about Rockhampton, rainfall accumulations there not expected to be pretty much anything registering in the rain gauges. So we'll wait and see how this weather event unfolds. I think this might end up being kind of a weather event where we kind of play it by ear and have a look at what the radar is doing on the day. Uh, and again, it is still too early to be telling exactly where the system is going to be coming from. Still a few showers here and there streaming into the Casbury Coast at this point in time, but this uh, weather system here, this weather event hasn't properly developed yet. We'll wait and see till this weekend until what is going to actually develop here across far north Queensland. But it will be interesting, a bit of out of season rainfall accumulation they will take it with open arms, that's for sure. And again, this is not the type of rainfall that is to be concerned about in regards to flooding. We're not expecting heavy falls out of this rainfall whatsoever, so there's no need to be worrying about that at all at this point in time. Now, just before I head over west, I would just like to touch on the temperatures right now across southeastern Queensland and central New South Wales. They are freezing. Nights have been well below average, but last night should have been the last night where we have those absolutely awfully frigid cold uh, temperatures across much of Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Don't get me wrong, tonight will still be cold across parts of Queensland at New South Wales and Victoria, especially into the high country. Above 1,000 metres, you're guaranteed to go below zero. And in fact, once you get above about 15 or 1,600 metres, you'll be looking at temperatures dipping down down to about minus four, minus five. Expecting a really cold start tomorrow morning around Threadbow, we'll be probably looking at a min minimum there, approaching minus six or minus seven degrees. It's gonna be very cold around Threadbow, that's for sure. And then widespread temperatures dropping to around two or three degrees, probably about four degrees into the northern parts of New South Wales, and then once again, down to about two or three degrees into interior parts of South Central Queensland. Temperatures there are gonna be quite cool, and frigid conditions are also expected around the Northern Territory and South Australia as well. So one more day of some very cool temperatures just before they return to a little bit more uh, more resembling uh, normality on Thursday. Temperatures will still be very cold across New South Wales under the influence of that strong high pressure system. And then temperatures rising on Friday ahead of a strong cold front that's gonna be moving through into southern parts of Australia. But very cold temperatures expected into the high country. We're looking at temperatures approaching minus 10 degrees on both Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday mornings. Temperatures expected to warm up marginally on Saturday, but still very cold temperatures expected all around into the high country as we get out towards this coming weekend. So again, rug up if you are in Southeastern Australia. And just to wrap this video up, I would like to talk about the weather conditions over in southwestern Australia. It looks like I'm dipping below the camera at this point in time, so I apologise for that. That cold front sweeping up from the south, it hasn't reached the Perth metro area yet, but a few showers now beginning to develop and materialise adjacent to the Perth coastline. And like I said in yesterday's forecast update, these showers are packing a punch. There are some heavy falls associated with this here. Uh, definitely some intense downpours expected to move into the uh, southwest and maybe even by extension the Perth metro area. The one thing that's kind of got me concerned here is this little cloud band that's he headed in directly for the southern suburbs of Perth. That's about to move over the Lewin Current, which is very warm. Plenty of convective energy here, and I reckon we're going to see a pretty significant line of showers materialise out of this here, pushed forward by this cold front. Every now and then, especially into the early winter months, we can get these sleeper uh, cold fronts that come through. They don't look like too much on the radar imagery, and trust me, if you zoom out to encompass Australia, this cold front does not look like much at all, especially compared to the other weather systems that we're used to in the southwest of WA. But this cold front here might pack a little bit more more of a punch than what people might initially be expecting. The Southwest Capes are now behind this system by the looks of things. We're expecting rainfall to begin to clear out of those regions at this point in time. Still a few showers expected later on today. Perth metro area, we're probably looking at about 9 or 10 a.m. for this to cross into the southern suburbs, about 11 o'clock into the Perth area, and then closer to lunchtime or midday up into the northern suburbs again. With these rainfall accumulations here, especially with the showers that are developing
developing an, uh, adjacent to the coastline at this point in time. This cold front does look like it could pack a little bit more of a punch than what people are anticipating. That Lewin current is very warm, plenty of convective energy for this cold front to make the most of, and as such we are expecting some pretty significant downpours to materialise for some locations. Widespread falls in excess of 5mm expected through the Perth metro area. Rainfall accumulations should top out at about 25mm of rainfall, depending again on what system does come through here. If we get uh, very heavy showers moving through for certain locations, we'll likely see much more rainfall. And rainfall accumulations looking very good all in all over the next 14 days through southwestern Australia as well. We're looking at uh, rainfall accumulations potentially as high as 200 millimetres along the south coastal region between Augusta across towards Albany. Rainfall accumulations into the Perth metro area. We'll be looking at that triple figures, including the cold front that's coming through in the next couple of hours over the next 14 days. So let's break that down for you right now. Of course, that one coming through today, not much in the wake of that system and just a few showers lingering here and there into early tomorrow morning. We'll likely see a couple of drops of rainfall here and there around the coastline, clearing by tomorrow afternoon and evening. Showers again building on Thursday and then showers coming out of the southwest on Friday. They could be a little bit heavier at times with another cold front coming through, especially across the southwest uh, coastal regions and then into the southwest capes, barely making it to the Perth metro area though through Friday afternoon. Showers continuing through Saturday, a fine day on Sunday by the looks of things before another cold front returns on Tuesday and then Wednesday, the 17th and 18th of June respectively. And then rainfall returns again in the form of another but stronger cold front on Friday the 20th and the 21st of June. And then a couple of days of fine weather expected behind that before another cold front on the 24th of June. Rainfall just looks to be piling in at this point in time across the southwest of Western Australia as we would expect at this time of the year. Interesting stuff though, these cold fronts will continue to keep coming and rainfall accumulation is looking very healthy as a result. It'd be great to get some rainfall out into the wheat belt. It looks like that is exactly what these weather systems are going to bring. Widespread falls now on the wheat belt forecast between 30 to 50 millimetres of rainfall. Even falls as high as 25 millimetres expected well out towards Southern Cross and Kalani and Dalbolony. So rainfall accumulations now beginning to build across the wheat belt regions as well. Very, very good to see this and I'm very happy for all of the agricultural communities out there in the wheat belt. Of course, the better rainfall accumulations are going to occur the closer to the coastline you are, especially the closer to the southwest. The rainfall accumulations down there looking very healthy over the next 14 days. And if we do get these strong cold fronts coming through in a significant fashion, and especially residual showers afterwards, we will be looking at up to 200 millimetres expected along the coastline for Walpole, Pemberton, and down towards Albany as well, even though Pemberton is just slightly inland. Interesting stuff, that is for sure. Certainly something I'll be keeping you post, uh, posted on on the Cyclones Oz channel, but that is going to be all for me today. I do hope you've enjoyed this forecast update. If you have, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. And again, their support is, of course, much appreciated. If you too want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video, then click the join button down below. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. Uh, and um, what else? Like the video and leave a comment uh, detailing all the reports for your location as well in the comment section down below. That was a bit of a faff, but on that note, that is going to be all for me today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.